doing it? Man, I'm just going to go out there and uh, put on a show on Saturday. So uh, I just want to entertain the fans with everything I've been working on, preparing for the fight mainly, physically, emotionally. And I just want to get you know some uh, some fan engagement. You know, it's been a great energy, a great atmosphere here in LA. Uh, so I just want to ask some question and give them some no love exercise. Well, people are going to wonder, like maybe was he trying to hide something? Whether it be an injury, whether it be a tactic, whether it be something. Look, man, I'm I'm, I'm the most physically fit I've ever been. Most mentally stable, emotionally. I'm ready to go out there and uh, capture this goal and put TJ away. And that's it. There's no hiding anything. You know what I mean? It's, I love this, I'm very blunt with everything I do in my life. I'm very raw and real. Uh, I'm excited to go out there and uh, get this title back. When you think back to that first fight, man, how does it live in your head? Because I think some people are like, oh, you got stopped. And, but when you watch the fight, I mean, you had some success early on, right? So, I mean, what do you think? Is it a, a small mistake you made tactically? Is it your man, condition that evening? What, what do you think about it? I'm super confident. I mean, you name any fighter that can get off the couch and, and, and beat someone that, that caliber. TJ is a, is a real deal. He's a, he's a tough fighter. He's a great adversary. He's a great opponent. But when I'm healthy, this guy will not, not ever stand a chance. We'll never, we'll never make it past round one. When I put him with that right hand, he can put to sleep. You know, and that's no excuse. I don't want to make it like I'm excuses, but this is the thing. I fly to, you know, Las Vegas to get eight epidural shots you know, two weeks before the fight because I couldn't walk. You know what I mean? It was all around the world with these magical shots, you know, that were going to hear my back heal it, you know. And uh, that is what it is. I was able to take some necessary time. I have a great physical therapist, Russ Downing out of Sacramento, California. I have a great uh, strength and conditioning coach that really bought her, you know, uh, armored my body up this camp. You know what I mean? If you look back from last picture to this picture, I'm physically fit, my cardio's off the charts, I'm faster than ever, I'm hitting harder than ever. And the main thing from this fight to the last fight is I'm focused. I've been completely focused the whole entire time, 12 weeks straight, nothing but grinding. You'll see that on Saturday night. Uh, Cody, you're, you're probably already aware, but uh, some, some uh, uh, unflattering tweets resurface today. Uh, do you want to take a moment to address now that? I don't address that. You know, that's that's uh, what, when I was a teenager? Anyways, next question. There's that iconic image after that fight, you know, of him in your face screaming. Uh, I wonder, you know, when you see that image, what kind of emotion it stirs in you? Have you, I mean, do you take, good, take that personal? He's, he's classless. That's TJ, and he's always been like that. It's, it's who he is, you know. You know, win and lose with class. And you know, when I outclass Dominic Cruz, you know, I give him that, I give him this respect. TJ's up in my face, you know what I mean? Flexing on my, on my team, acting like a real asshole. You know what? I remember every single thing. That's what motivated me this whole entire camp. He didn't get in my face right after that fight. But damn, no will. You know, if it was me and him, like it was a, in our locker rooms, just me and him, face to face, he wouldn't do that. He did that because, you know, like I said, he's classy. There's been sort of a triangle between you, Dominic, and TJ, so in the band way to make it It does seem like Marlon Rice and Rafael Asensio were right behind. Are you ready Next level. They're net, we're on a different level. I'm on a different level than all those guys. Yeah, TJ did get me, you know, but uh, you, you see me outclass Dominic Cruz. I'm going to outclass TJ Dillashaw. I'm just a, I'm just levels above all these guys. Are you ready for some new blood, though? To sort of come in and new blood, yeah. New blood, you know, it's, it, it's fine. New blood. I'm glad these guys are going out there and putting on, you know, performances, but who, who are they really fighting? I'd rather much fight a guy that's, you know, stapled himself in the pound for pound, Demetrius Johnson. I mean, that's the next fight I think that needs to be made after I demolish TJ on Saturday. He said that he's not interested in going up to 135 for any price. Can you, I, mean, I, can go go down, down? I can go down to 125 pounds this week and I can make it. You know what I mean? I, I have the best nutritionist in the game, George Lockhart, Dan Keith. And uh, that's the thing that uh, we we'll talk to my coaches, Dana White. Let's just think, they have to compensate us, like I said earlier in the, in the media week, that. Uh, you know, he's, a, he's about to, you know, possibly consecutive, 12 consecutive uh, title if he, you know, defenses if he does it this Saturday. You know, you got to pay him, you got to pay me. You know what I mean, we're going to bring, that's a super fight. It's, it's the two best, you know, lighterweight guys in the world. You feel like that's the fight that makes sense? Because as he said, you know, we know Cruz is coming back. As he said, Asuncio's out there saying, hey, what about my shot? But you feel like you can put Bantamweight on hold and go to 125 instead? Yeah, definitely. Let uh, Don and Sinsal fight each other. But that's the thing. Um, to your question, that, that was my whole idea. I ended up hitting Sean Shelby up, Dana White, before the TJ fight. I said, I'm going to knock TJ out, fight him, and then go down and fight Mighty Mouse. That was my original thought. TJ stole that from me, stole everything from me. If the UFC 
wanted that fight to prosper, they would have made that fight happen. They don't want that to happen. They don't want, you know what I mean? They wouldn't have, they would have moved on. They want me to be the champion. That's why they gave me the rematch. So they called me and offered me the fight in March. You know, TJ turned it down, made all these excuses. Then I have to wait all the way till August to fight him. I was ready to go way before. That's why I told my manager Ali, I said, I'm ready to fight. I don't want to have my, uh, my return, you know, postponed. I'm healthy. I, I'm used to fighting four or five times a year. Last year I was hurt. You know, that's not how I like to do things. I like to be in the gym and evolve and, and get these wins. But uh, that's what they want to do. I'm going to go out there and fight TJ, knock him out, and you know, we'll see what Dana White and want to do. You think the UFC wants he wants you to win this fight? I think the UFC is rooting for you. Uh, you know, TJ wants to say Dana wants me to be, the UFC wants me to be. But the simple fact is, TJ didn't want this fight. You know what I mean? They had to, you know, basically tell him, hey, you want to go down and fight Mighty Mouse, okay? Why wouldn't you fight, even if you didn't want to fight me, he didn't, he didn't see him wanting to fight Dominic. Dominic's got a winner against him. You know, he wants to get the, he is, wants the easiest style matchup. You don't want to fight me. Lord knows he doesn't want to fight me. He knows what I bring to the table. He knows I'm a threat over all those guys. And, Do and Dominic's already in his head. He's going to win over him. So he's going to, I'm going to go after Mighty Mouse. For what? Mighty Mouse is 125 pounds. Thanks, guys. You said you got some special treatment. What's that? He said you got some special treatment. Special treatment because I outclassed one of the best band and weight champions in the world who outclassed him. If you watch that fight with TJ and Dominic, TJ was swinging that air, got outclassed. He said it was a close fight, and then you know why? He feels like he's entitled. He's, he had a silver spoon in his mouth his whole entire life. You know what I mean? He doesn't he know anything about adversity. That's why he wants to bitch and cry about it. It took me two years to get back to the top, he says. Okay, but you weren't knocking people out. I was knocking people out in the first round. Tough adversaries, you know, people that's never been sought before. That's why I got the title shot over him. You know, and I didn't sell out over that. Did you ever? Did Cody, you ever what are the differences yourself? this time for you mentally? This is the last question, guys. As a challenger, off a loss, but also being healthy this time coming in. Man, that's what I'm saying. I was so confident after I watched the first fight with TJ that knowing that I didn't train, I didn't wasn't mentally, physically, emotionally invested in that fight. I couldn't be there. There's no way that I could have been mentally, physically, emotionally invested in that fight when I was just focused on getting healthy. I kept getting offered from the UFC, hey, can you fight at this day? Can you fight at this day? No, I can't. I can't. Finally went over to Germany, got the procedures done, and talked to the doctor who they sent me to. They said, we wouldn't have you fight or even train for six months. You know, so this is their doctor that I'm sending in. So I'm like, I got to listen to their doctor. I, I want to have longevity in my career. I'm the world champion. And, you know, I, I didn't get to enjoy that. So I'm, I'm saying, you see me on a natural high right now. I'm focused. I'm ready. I'm excited about that fight. Thank you, guys.